Welcome back to the garage. Thank you so much for watching. Today, what we're gonna be working on is installing a new set of hinges, getting the doors aligned, uh, and getting everything as close to perfect as we can on these 50-year-old trucks. The lift-off hinges. <laughs> well, they're, they're, sp they're supposed to lift off. The lift off hinges. And they go back on so easily. That was amazing. It actually worked. So here are all the parts that come in the kit. We've got uh, these fancy door straps, strap holder, two hinges that can uh, easily pull apart, some bolts for the strap, and then the bolts for the door hinges. Step one is to remove your old door hinges. Basically, all you have to do is unscrew the bolts from the door jam, and this is gonna come off. But here is my Nashville early Bronco tip. When you're pulling this out, pull out two of the bolts, then go and cut one of the heads off one of the bolts. And then you got this thing and you just thread it back in to one of the holes. This little guy is gonna save your backing plate from falling back into that inner uh, channel that's in there. Step two, put your new hinges on the body. Pretty easy, there are three bolts that you gotta put in there. And, and you see there, that's where that headless bolt came into play. All I had to do is slide the hinge on top of it, screw in the other two bolts, and then use some vice grips and pull off that headless bolt. That's the easiest part of this whole install, is putting the hinges back on. It only gets worse from here. Step number three, remove your hinges from the door. But when you're doing it, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, I snapped the head right off of the very first bolt that I tried to remove. So what did I do? I did a lot of drilling. So this is, this is me drilling, and uh, this is me drilling some more. Oh, yep, drilling some more. Finally got through, and yes, pounded that sucker out. And then, new day, I put my hinges on. And then step four, get your doors on. So this is kind of my technique. It is uh, put a bunch of stuff underneath the door and get it high enough so you can just kind of shimmy the door on over to the hinges, but um, that doesn't, I mean, that's, that's a horrible technique. But the thing was, man, you'd get a pin in and then the bottom pin wouldn't go in, or they'd only go in like a quarter of an inch, and then you had to like jiggle the door to get them to go down, and you want to keep the hinges loose because obviously you need some play because the doors don't, you know, the hinges don't line up perfectly. But man, trying to get them in and Square is extremely time consuming and requires a lot of patience. So that takes us to step five, aligning the door. So if you're at home and you haven't done this yet uh, on your Bronco and you're thinking about doing it, don't. I don't know who designed the Bronco door, but they should not have, they should have been fired. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work through this, and I'm gonna show you what I did on the other side, but I'm gonna show you on this door because it's pretty jacked up. All right, so this is the door in question. So you can see, slam it shut. It's actually sticking out a little bit down here, and it goes in right here. Up here, it sticks out as well. The way that I've done it is to get the engine hoist uh, and your jack and jack it up and put 
your engine hoist and do I'll show you. Let me let me just show you. My door was sticking out too far up here. So what I'm going to try to do is loosen these bolts and then try to slide this hinge that way. It, it's better, but it's not quite there yet. What I think I need to do is loosen the bottom and actually pull the bottom out towards me. All right, so that helped the bottom a ton. But what I'm noticing is right up here, it's actually higher. And so I think both of the hinges need to come down, which is a bummer because you loosen both the hinges then you lose your, your settings, but it has to be done. What I'm actually going to do is leave the door where it is. And uh, I just moved the hinges down a little bit. So hopefully I can tighten the hinges down, lower this back down, and it'll kind of fall into place. The door is not falling into place. I went too low with the bottom one, so I got to lift it back up. Camera down. So right there, you can see that I've got about three eighths of a gap at the top front of my door. But when I come down and follow this down, now I've got about a quarter of a gap at the bottom of my door. And then, you can see there's a gap at the top of the door lining up with the frame. And then you can see that there's still this major gap under here when I shut the door where I can basically stick my whole finger in uh, to the door inside that door jam. So that's what I'm trying to solve right now. Let me show you what kind of what I learned from messing with each of the body mounts and jacking them up. But before I do that, I forgot to mention this earlier in the video. I have a questionnaire in the uh, description below. Uh, there's a link to a questionnaire. I'm just wondering, what do you guys think I should be doing to my Bronco? What do you think that I should work on? And what do you want to see a video about? And man, if you have a Bronco and you want me to come out and film it and do a little video with you, let me know. But let me show you real quick what I've learned from all of my trial and error last night. So, so what do we know with the Bronco? We know that there are four body mount points that you can adjust. There's one up in the front under the grill, one right behind me under uh, kind of on the floorboard of uh, the seat, one right here in the uh, quarter panel right behind the seat, and then one in the back of the Bronco. So I'm gonna start here with this one right uh, along the, the seal of the door. When I jack up on this part right here where the body mount is, what I'm noticing is that basically this part of the door is beginning to open at the top like this. If you don't have enough of a gap up here uh, in this corner, this might be the post that you want to jack up on. But the problem that I ran into with that is that this part of the truck began to raise up. And right now what I'm dealing with is my door is sagging a bit. And so I don't want that part of the door to raise up. What I also noticed when I jacked up this part of the frame is this seam right here started closing in and this seam down here started opening. So it kind of shifted the door a little bit uh, all together. So if your door is kind of at an angle, that may be, this may be the post that you want to jack up on to kind of get it straightened out. So then I started jacking on this part of the Bronco and it basically had the reverse effect. This seam down here 
It started closing. This seam up here started opening. And then over here, same kind of thing. Uh, this seam down here started opening and this one over here started closing. But the same thing was happening that happened on this side where this fender started lifting up. Now it was good because it kind of began lifting the door up, but really not enough to make a difference. And I'd have to put like an inch and a half of, you know, shims under there to get it to where I want it to be. So that's not what I need to do. Now, when you jack up the mounting point under the front of the Bronco, basically it's just moving the front, which is kind of nice. So if you imagine you're lifting the front up, which is closing the seam or closing the gap up here and opening the gap down here. But what you run into with that is it begins to bring this fender down low which then makes your door sag even more. When you jack up the, um, the body mount on the back, what happens is basically the same thing on the front, but opposite. So your seam here begins to close, your seam down here begins to open, and this panel begins to lower. Um, all those things combined were not what I wanted to do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to try to shim the door hinges. So I'm going to grab some washers um, and put it behind the door hinges where I want and try to get it to line up evenly that way. All right, so I'm just going to use a couple of these little washers and try to slide them behind the hinge, but I'm going to keep a bolt in there just so I don't lose that backing plate behind there. So not a whole lot of difference here. Maybe, gosh, a sixteenth of an inch difference. Basically, no change down here. But where it did change that I really like is that gap up there is a lot smaller now. So I'm going to try that again and uh, see what happens. I'm super gluing my washers together because trying to pin two washers in that channel is pretty much impossible. I mean, honestly, if you're shimming your doors, you should probably do it right and just buy the shim kit from Tom's Bronco Parts. Or I've got two shims on there. So I'm at right over a quarter of an inch. And then down here, ugh went too far. Now that is three eighths of an inch. Now that is too high. Maybe I should have just stuck with uh, one washer on each side. Oh man, but look at that. Woo, no gap. Do I go down one washer or just leave it alone? UPS man, is there anything for me UPS man? All right, I think I've got it now pretty close. Everything is about within a 16th or a 32nd of an inch, and the door is pretty level, maybe sits a little bit too high, but uh, pretty proud of it. What I ended up doing was taking out, uh, so I have in the bottom hinge, I have two washers in the bottom and then only one up top. Uh, so kind of pivoted a little bit that way uh, and got it really close. All right, so the last step in all this is the rubber door seals. You guys know what it's like trying to close the door with those d rubber door seals in place. Super, super tough. But the trick is what you want to do is you want to heat the seal up hot, like hot enough that it's not melting it, but that it's super pliable slam the door shut and leave it shut for a couple days. And after that, it kind of molds to the seal, the door molds to the seal, and it makes it so much easier uh, to shut your doors. So I'm gonna do that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I so appreciate the support uh, and uh, love it when you guys leave comments. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any 
of uh, the early Bronco videos that I'm putting out. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.